2013 Veterans Day Assembly. My name is Caitlin Keller, and this is Dr. Licklau, and we are the co-presidents of the Benjamin Schools Veterans Club. On behalf of our teacher sponsor, Mr. Archer, we thank you for coming here today so that we may honor the men and women of the United States Armed Forces who put themselves in danger so that we may enjoy the freedoms that we have today. We would like to introduce you to the Master of Ceremonies for today, fellow Veterans Club member and last year's president, Kyle Wilson. Thank you and welcome. Veterans Day is a nationally observed holiday, celebrated officially on November 11th to honor the men and women that served in the United States Armed Forces. Veterans Day first started when President Woodrow Wilson proclaimed Armistice Day, which marked the anniversary of the signing of the Armistice at the end of World War I on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918. After the Korean War, Congress replaced Armistice with veterans. Today, we have a guest speaker who knows what it means to sacrifice for his country. Musical and dance performances from the Benjamin School's band and chorus and dance team. And a moving video about the men and women who served. Now may I ask you to please stand as the Dwyer Army Junior ROTC Color Guard presents the colors and remain standing as the Benjamin Band, chorus, band and Chorus performs their national anthem. Thank you. You may be seated. Our guest speaker today is Marine First Lieutenant Robert M. Keith, Jr. Lieutenant Keith enlisted in the Marine Corps in February of 2001 and completed his recruit training at Paris Island. He was then assigned to 3rd Reconnaissance Battalion, 3rd Marine Division, Marine Expeditionary Force, Okinawa, Japan. After completing his initial enlistment, Lieutenant Keefe went back to school and earned his Bachelor's Degree of Science 
and Psychology from the University of Maryland University College. He then re-enlisted in September of 2007 and once again served with the 3rd Reconnaissance Battalion. In 2008, then a Staff Sergeant Select, Keith was selected to attend Oscar Candidate School class and was commissioned a second lieutenant on March 20, 2009. Following basic school and logistics officer course, he was assigned to Combat Logistics Battalion uh, 2, Combat Logistics Regiment 2. Lieutenant Keith served as a pl platoon commander for a truck platoon during the platoon's deployment in Afghanistan from July 2010 to February of 2011. During the deployment, he sustained combat injuries and was medically separated from the Marine Corps in November of 2012. Lieutenant Keith continued to serve fellow veterans as a facilities management service member at the VA Medical Center in West Palm Beach. Lieutenant Keith's medical decora military de decorations include the Purple Heart, the Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal, and the Good Conduct Medal with a Bronze Star. It is an honor to introduce to, introduce to you Marine Lieutenant Robert Keith, Jr. Thank you very much. Kyle, I know that was a mouthful. Sorry for the confusing words. Most of you may not even know what all he said. I just basically said where I, where I worked in the past decade and uh, a little bit about what I did. So, being a Marine, a constant Marine for a few years, and a commission officer, a just officer running convoys in Afghanistan. As I said, I had injuries from, from combat, which I had been separated last year. Uh, anyways, so being a veteran today, and being here in front of you, it is a great honor and privilege because we're celebrating you know, who I am and who my fellow veterans are, and I appreciate that. And I want to thank you for having us here today. I want to thank you as a as an advocate for the University of South Florida, uh, as a wonderful group that has helped me a lot uh, since I've been out, since I've been injured, as a wounded warrior, uh, I thank you for supporting them, supporting the warriors. That, that means a lot to me. Being in combat, it's a lot different than day-to-day uh, -day affairs as a civilian, which I'm still getting used to a year later. Uh, I want to share what does Veterans Day mean to me, a veteran. And I thought of a few things that I want to highlight. One, honoring those who served, which you are here doing today. Two, remembering the sacrifices they made. Three, being thankful for the freedom that we maintain because of those who fought and died for us. Because remember, freedom is not free. Maybe you've seen a bumper sticker or a sign that says, for those who fought for it, freedom has a flavor to protect it from the never And until you have fought for it, you won't know, but let me share that it's an honor and a privilege to be a veteran. And I took my service with great pride and an honor to be able to serve for all of you. And I, I think about you, my younger brothers and sisters, my friends and family that are back here enjoying life because of what I was doing in Afghanistan or when I was toward employed in Okinawa. So it, it was an honor and privilege. Very proud to be a veteran. To honor veterans is to give them respect, to show a courteous regard for them. You know, a simple thank you for your service means the world to me. Just those few words means a lot. To remember their sacrifices made, you must know what they sacrificed. Maybe you have friends or family that have served or shared stories with you what they've gone through. A couple of things that 
came to my mind was time. They're time away from loved ones. Would it be a couple weeks in the field? For me, that was a couple weeks patrolling in the jungles of northern Okinawa or in the Philippines or in Korea. Uh, or up to 7, 12, or 15 month deployment to Afghanistan or Iraq or any other hostile environment. Or maybe it's spending Thanksgiving Day or Christmas Day on duty, away from home, away from family and loved ones, unable to open presents or break bread and enjoy some turkey or ham. Or the ultimate sacrifice of their life, laid down in the defense of this nation. So we may enjoy our precious freedom the ability to get here today. And to be thankful for that precious freedom they have given us means we should reflect on why we have the privileges we ought to take for granted. I'd like to read a little poem or saying that's been attributed to Charles and Providence. It is the soldier, not the minister, who has given us freedom of religion. It is a soldier, not a reporter, who has given us freedom of the press. It is a soldier, not a poet, who has given us freedom of speech. It is a soldier, not the campus organizer, who has given us freedom to protest. It is a soldier, not a lawyer, who has given us the right to fair trial. It is a soldier, not a politician, who has given us the right to vote. It is a soldier who salutes the flag, who serves beneath the flag, and whose coffin is draped by the flag, who allows a protester to burn the flag. I have a question for you. Who got out of bed this morning, got dressed, ate some breakfast, maybe, drank some coffee, came to school, all without hearing machine gun fire, or bombs exploding, or maybe wondering, will I make it through the day alive? I know I did. I'm here, safe and sound. Thank God. I appreciate your support. I thank you for honoring us veterans today. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Lieutenant Keith, and thank you for your service to our country. The Benjamin School Band, Chorus, and Dance Team will now perform the Armed Forces Medley, the Pride of America. Veterans, please stand when you hear your branch of service this song. United States Army. United States And the caissons go rolling along. In and out, hear them shout, counter march right about. And the caissons go rolling along. Then it's high, high knee in the field artillery. Shout out your numbers out and strong. United States to Marines. Fight for right and freedom, and to keep our honor clean. We are proud to claim the title of United States Marines. 
United States Navy. United States Coast Guard. We're always ready for the call. We place our trust in thee. Through sir and storm and hurricane, I shall our purpose be. Semper Paratus is our guide. United States Air Force. Off we go, yo, into the wild blue yonder. Flying high into the sun. Here they come, Here they come to meet, to meet our thunder. Have no mind, give them the gun. Down the dice, running our plane from under. Off on one terrible court. We live in faith, we'll go down in faith. Ain't nothing will stop the year. Thank you, band and chorus, and the Dazzlers dance team. We will now acknowledge our Benjamin faculty and staff, who are also called veterans. When you hear your name, will you please stand up? Mr. David Parks, Specialist, 4th Class, United States Army, 1968 through 1971. Mr. Frank Taylor, Captain, United States Army, 1970 through 1979. Mr. Randy Rogan, Yeoman, third class, United States Navy, 1970 through 1972. <laughs> Mr. Steve Hamill, specialist, United States Army, 1977 through 1980. <laughs> Mr. Ken Archer, Staff Sergeant, United States Air Force, 1981 yeah. through 1992. And Mr. Lada Bauckham, Captain, United States Army, 1987 through 1998. And if we can have all of our veterans in attendance, please stand up as well. We thank you all for your sacrifice, your service, and your dedication to preserving freedom. Veterans Day have held a special place in Mr. Archer's heart, not because he is one, but because of his, the special relationship he has had with over 400 of them during his career in television, pro producing a six-part Emmy-nominated documentary honoring our nation's veterans. Here's a couple of those stories, followed by two moving videos he found on the internet. Enjoy. Speed and firepower were key to Larry Mangini's survival in World War II. 
His M10 tank killer was lethal to the enemy, even though it didn't offer him much protection. It's a totally different than a normal Sherman tank kind of a thing because it has hardly no armor and it can cruise at about 35 miles an hour. So the motto, their motto was to seek, strike, and destroy, to get in there as fast as you can and then get out. A strategy that served him well, as he and his crew won many encounters and battles across Europe until they reached Buchenwald, where the atrocities of the German concentration camps stopped them in their tracks. The Germans had taken off because we, we pushed them out and the, they left behind a whole bunch of bodies that were like skeletons that they had starved and tortured and uh, well then we had them bury them well anyhow we had them bury them nearby in the cemetery for a time being Mangini would later participate in another devastating confrontation at the Battle of the Bulge we were knee deep uh, two feet of snow in the in Belgium at that time, and uh, that's when the uh, the Germans came up with a, a white flag to, for to surrender, and uh, uh, General McAuliffe, McAuliffe answered him by saying, "Nuts!" The Germans wanted him to surrender. So and he turned around and told him, nuts, he's not going to surrender. So for the next two weeks, Mangini and U.S. forces would battle the Germans in one of the war's bloodiest battles. For Mangini, those two weeks are times he would just as soon forget. It's nothing that I read about. I witnessed it, so not even I can attest to that, all right. Not even, I, I've never talked about this to anybody. It's history and it's over and done with, and thank goodness for that. Sixty years have done little to erode the vivid recollection of what Earl, Earl Anderson endured as a prisoner of war. Earl enlisted in 1937. The Great Depression left few options for a kid fresh out of high school. The no, Navy have, seemed a good uh, career path. No, I had no idea. At that age, who would have I know? I didn't know a damn thing about what was going on in the world, really. No pay any attention to it. World War II would soon gain Earl's full attention. He was in the Philippines when the war broke out, a mechanic aboard the submarine tender Canopus. When Bataan fell, the Canopus was scuttled to keep it out of Japanese hands. The crew was dispatched to nearby Corregidor to join a marine battalion already dug in, defending the island. Well, we figured this was it. We were going to fight to the end. That was it. We didn't expect to get, you know, get out of there alive. General Jonathan Wainwright eventually surrendered Corregidor. There were 10,000 American troops on the island. It was on May, the, I think it was May the 5th, 1942. That was when I was taken prisoner. Earl's younger brother Walter was 16 at the time. We found out some, the family found out. We didn't talk about it much. But uh, it, it, it came through that he was taken present. That's all we knew. At that time, I, 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 I said to myself, this is a survival. I'm, I'm going to survive this one way or the other. And that was on my mind almost all the time I was appealed to. That determination kept Earl Anderson alive for 42 months in captivity. And freedom did not end the order. Deal. It took me months before I could, I could actually accept the fact that I was back in, in life again. Family helped Earl yeah. reconnect. Did it feel good to be back with your brother? Oh, heck yeah. A wife also helped him heal. Earl and Penny were married for 54 years before she passed away. It was her idea to display his many medals. To this day, not as big a deal to Earl. I never gave him much thought, really. But one thing Never, never gave much thought. But one thing he has contemplated every living day since being set free, how to make the most of that precious I'll gift so many do. died for. I'll tell you what it made me do more than anything else. I live one day at a time. I live every day as it comes. And here I am. We observe Veterans Day on an anniversary. We observe Veterans Day on an anniversary, not of a great day or of the beginning of a war, but of a day when war ended and our nation was 
again at peace. Ever since the Ever since the armistice of November the 11th, 1918, this day has been to remember our debt to all who have worn the uniform of the United States. Our veterans have borne the costs of America's wars. Our veterans have borne the costs of America's wars and have stood watch over America's peace. And today, every veteran can be served. And today, Every veteran can be certain that the nation you served and the people you defended are grateful. Today and every day, the prayers of the American people. Today and every day, the prayers of the American people are with those who wear our country's uniform. They follow a great They serve a great cause and they follow a great tradition handed down to them by America's veterans. Our veterans from every era are the finest of citizens. We owe them the life we know today. They command the respect of the American people, and they have our lasting the military gratitude. Life is built around sacrifice. The military life is built around sacrifice. They have complete devotion to America. If you have lived that life, then you know the meaning of commitment to a greater cause. So many ways, the life we live today has been shaped by our veterans. On Veterans Day, we remember the fallen, and we show our respect to those still among us, the veterans we know as our friends, neighbors, relatives, and colleagues. Every veteran has known the full fury of battle, but most count their time in uniform among the defining experiences of their lives. The military drew out the best that was in them, instilling the highest standards of diligence, discipline, and loyalty. And that is a bond joining every veteran from every branch of the service, whether drafted or enlisted, commissioned or non-commissioned. Each took an oath, ready to fight, lived by a code, and stood ready to fight and die for their country. More than a generation has passed since the war ended in Vietnam. Since that time, even since the war in the Persian Gulf, the technology of warfare has become far more complex and sophisticated. Yet our most basic military asset has not changed at all. It is the character, the daring, and the resourcefulness of those who do the fighting. No matter how complicated war might be, it always comes down to the ones who fly the planes, man the ships, and carry the rifles. And our country's military has left a legacy like no other fighting force ever assembled. The uniform they wear and the flag they carry are held in esteem wherever they have served. And that is their finest tribute. Across the world, to people who struggle and suffer, the sight of an American in uniform has meant hope, relief, and deliverance. Veterans Day is set aside to remember every man and woman who has taken up arms to defend our country. We honor every soldier, sailor, airman, marine, and coast guardsman who gave some of the best years of their lives to the service of the United States and stood ready to give life itself on our behalf. Twenty-five million veterans walk among us, and on this day, our nation thanks them all. When history looks back upon the records of our age and our nation centuries from now, I believe it will be written that once there was a great nation of free people who sent their very best young men and women out to serve on the frontiers of freedom in uniform. They went forth to defend their nation and its ideals giving up the comforts and conveniences of home. They led lives of great consequence, 
for they kept the torch of liberty burning in the oldest democracy on earth. Each and every one of them were heroes and gave to every child born thereafter a precious and irreplaceable gift. And their nation remained eternally grateful. Three teens were arrested today for defacing the Kensington Park War Memorial overnight. The destruction includes painted messages against the military and the war in the Middle East. The three teens were picked up in the early morning Rick, hours after evidence was left at the scene. Grandpa, something wrong? Some people sure have short memories. And those who are too young to know need to be taught. Come on, I, I want to show you guys something. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. At dawn on the morning of the 6th of June, 1944, 225 Rangers jumped off the British landing craft and ran to the bottom of these cliffs. 225 came here. After two days of fighting, only 90 could still bear arms. These are the boys of Puente Hope. These are the men who took the cliffs. These are the champions who helped free a continent. And these are the heroes who helped end a war. You are men who in your, quote, lives fought for life and left the vivid air signed with your honor. In the name of God and country, I learned to defy gravity. To honor my family, I lived in the belly of a beast. I fixed the hearts of iron monsters. I became a worm in the mud for dignity, for honor, for righteousness sake, for God and country. I fought for you. I fought for you. For you. I fought for you. I fought for you. For you, I fought for you. I fought for you. For you, for you, for you, for you. I fought for you. I fought for you. I fought for you, and I do it again. Please stand as the Dwyer Army Junior ROTC Color Guard retires the colors.
This concludes our Veterans Day Assembly. Once again, thank you, veterans, and thank you all for coming.